Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting. Hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Coming to you from the soup kitchen in Hollywood, California. We're doing it again. On the eve of our move. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know when I'm moving. But we're moving real soon, guys. And I am working on this resin base for the King of War from Creature Cast, this epic model. We started working on it a while ago. We took a break for October. And since I'm in a move transition state, I don't have a lot of models in the Beats Lab. We grabbed this base. I grabbed Thalmer Black from P3, but it doesn't matter. We rattle can prime this thing, let it dry for a couple hours, and you can see some of the gray still poking through. That's mainly because I was trying not to build up the spray paint on there. Now we're gonna just start working in a pre-highlight. I'm gonna use some gray, somber gray is one of my favorites, but you can use any gray. We're gonna basically be painting this thing in grayscale for now, and then we're gonna introduce in our warmer tones. It's real simple. So we're gonna basically be progressively adding more white into the pot, leaving less and less gray behind as we switch colors out, basically marrying the dirty paint water together. You've seen me do it a hundred times. We're doing it again. We're using Flow Improver, all those standard products. Like I said, we dump it in the hobo sink, add a little bit more white, keep going, and then eventually we're gonna land on pure white. And it's really cool when you're working with like a prime black model and you start doing the pre-highlight, you really get to see a lot of the details you may have missed when it was prime. So you can see here, I put a huge dollop of white in there. So this is gonna be our first real push toward the pure white. Now, anytime you're airbrushing with white, you're gonna wanna stay a little thinner than you would you would normally stay, and you're gonna wanna keep that tip clean. Ancient Chinese technique. And now you can see we're kind of focusing in on the skulls and less of the rocks. Now, obviously, there's no way we can just airbrush those skulls without getting overspray, so I don't care. I'm not even thinking about that. We've got some tricks up these sleeves. Uh, now, another thing with white and airbrush is that it basically takes a billion coats to get pure white because it's always going to be more transparent than if you did it with a paintbrush. So I'm not going to try to do a billion coats. I'll just end on the paintbrush, whatever. So we're going to mix up some flow improver, thin it down, keep the tip clean, do another pass, pure white. You can see it's looking pretty good. Now, I do like cool, like cool colored bone. I think that's really interesting. But I think that we're going to work more of a weathered, a little bit warmer tone here. As we move forward, I always end up that way on bases specifically. So we're gonna pull out an oldie but a goodie, Secret Weapon Miniatures Soft Body Black. Basically this formula from Secret Weapon Miniatures and Les Bursley, this is basically just a secret wash formula, AKA it's watered down paint. Now there's a few other proprietary chemicals in there, but at the end of the day, it's got a basic medium. When it dries, it's not much different than uh, a paint that was thinned down. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating contrast. I'm not actually really washing it. I mean, I am, I'm letting it find its way into the crevices. Um, I'm trying to bring attention to some of the details, but ultimately I'm trying to basically snap it into focus by adding the contrast. Now that it's dry, we're gonna grab the first brown off my shelf. We're gonna thin it down even thinner than normal. And we're gonna start glazing this brown in specifically on the rocks. We're gonna do our best to avoid the skulls. Now, some's going to get on the skulls, but not as much as you think because we are glazing it on. You see how thin it is? Because we pre-highlighted it with white and gray, it just took on the colors of the brown. We're going to let it ride, and now we're going to do some quick dry brushing. I'm going to grab a beat-up brush, some of that white, and we're just going to do some light, streaky dry brushing over the skulls. We're going to use a combination of white and any other bone or off-white. First one you see on your shelf, anything that's like an ivory or you know, like pallid witch flesh or whatever the GW color is. I think I'm using sickly skin from P3, but basically I'm trying to do a little bit more pure white on the skulls, but I'm gonna start introducing sickly skin and a little of that original brown into the rocks. And you can see when we started, our paint was everywhere. And like with each step, it gets a little bit more focused. We haven't, but we're, this is the first step that we're basically painting by numbers, right? That now we're actively avoiding other spots on the model. And that's how I like to paint. Big broad strokes in the beginning. Don't sit there and avoid things when you just have to come back in and wipe it out anyway. You're making more time for yourself. We sprayed it all down. We introduced some wash, we let it dry. We glazed on some browns. And now we're focusing on the different elements of the base, the dirt and the skulls. Dirt is brown, skulls are white. That's simple. And now we're just dry brushing in more and more of our off white and less and less of our brown into the dirt. Building up a nice dusty, dirty effect now it's one of the only things i use dry brush technique for is bases because that's okay if it looks kind of dusty i like it as a matter of fact we're just taking our time we'll see how we're dragging our highlights on from the same direction 
on the dirt. We're not going left, right, up, down. We're going one direction. Just to kind of reinforce on lighting. Now, of course, we're back to pure white. Do it a second pass on these skulls. Reinforcing it. It's a little streaky, but that's okay. This is all still like broad strokes. We're going to re, you know, focus yet again. We're going to basically add more contrast. Now we're going to grab a little bit of flesh wash from the army painter. And I'm going to show you this crazy shit. Uh, the, the base isn't brown enough for me. So I want to do some rapid fire streaks. We're just going to randomly use this wash more as a glaze. We're actually not trying to let it be opaque. We're not trying to let it settle anywhere and be opaque. We're actually using a very light brush pressure and, and thinning it out to be transparent. So like wash glaze is the same thing. It's all about how you use it. So right now we are glazing in this flesh wash color to sort of, you know, add an organic reddish brown hue to the base. And when it dries, it's going to be a little, just a little bit more organic, which I like. And then we can always go back and dry brush more if we want. But a lot of this is just to taste. You know, I'm just looking at it, deciding what it needs on the fly. Hey, you know what? I think it needs some green. I always think rocks could use a little green. So this is called baby poop. It's another wash from Secret Weapon Miniatures. We're going to thin it down and just do some rapid fire streaking with it. It's like a brownish sewer green. And it looks real good on rocks. Like it adds this this next level organic feeling to the rocks, especially if you want to come back and dry brush it out. But you can go to town with baby poop. <laughs> I love that color and you can see what it's doing it's really amping it up now we're really starting to add some colors rocks aren't just one color we're gonna let that dry we're gonna stay busy in the beats lab by grabbing one of our bomb wicks from slow fuse gaming that's the number two I thinned down that white we had with a little bit of water and what I'm doing is just real big fat highlights on the skulls now it looks time consuming it's not as bad as you think if you, you just pick a brush suitably big we went through and just did a big fat highlight, big glaze on all the skulls to really pop it that next level. While that skull is drying, we're staying busy in the beat slab. We're going to add a final sickly skin highlight to the rocks. You see how we're going one direction. We're careful to keep the highlight going from one direction. Try to really amp it up, really increase that contrast. Now, what we're going to do here is grab some of that leftover flesh wash, get our small detail brush out and anywhere a skull is touching a skull. We're going to slide in a little bit of this wash to kind of create that grime, you know, like it's where they're touching and the, maybe the mold and the mildew is, is, is building up there. So it's really going to start warming up the skulls off that pure white. Now, this technique could be applied to a whole army worth of bases. You know, you could cut out a few steps if you had this, you know, resin bases for your whole army. But at the end of the day, projects like this make me happy you really get to hobby out you know you get to just chill you get to be an artist i guess is really the term just you know explore like don't make any plans just do it like you know sometimes i don't even map it out i just see where i see where it goes and then later I'm, i voice it over and i make it seem like i knew what i was doing so here we go we're just reinforcing those browns like i said anywhere a skull touches a skull nut to butt we're going to add some contrast but also it's going to create some more warmth really bringing these skulls to life you can let it get in those eyes if you want. You can go into the teeth. I mean, you can go as hard as you want here. But I didn't want to go super hard because uh, there's going to be a model that completely obscures half of these skulls as he's looming over the base. <laughs> but yeah, there it is, guys. It's real simple. Uh, pretty simple little Thursday afternoon paint workup. Solid skull and dirt base. Had a blast. Hopefully, we'll be in the new Beats Lab soon, guys. Play on, players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.